Howdy folks, Doug here. In September 2019, I visited the Sawmill Museum in Clinton, Iowa, along with my family. It's located right along the Mississippi River, and the purpose is to tell you why Clinton ruled the lumber industry from the 1870s to the early 1900s. Life at the club, indeed. Well, how lived you? Of course, I knew how to have a good time while also building the largest lumber empire in the region. But you didn't do it at all. The three of you joined so yeah, let's just get the really kind of weirdish, interesting part out of the way right away. So right when you get there, they put you in this room with these four talking animatronic heads that are basically lumber barons of the area around Clinton from the late 1800s and they explained to you the history of the region and how they wanted to compete with upriver timber uh, so they would bring timber down from Minnesota and Wisconsin and have it processed in Clinton so a little creepy a little weird sure but hey it was interesting so this exhibit is called the steamboat captain of log rafts where you can guide a log raft down a simulated river on a water table. And this is something my kids enjoyed quite a lot, and I saw a lot of other kids enjoying it too. It was pretty neat. That little building puts out steam when you put water inside. There was also this model train hauling logs, of course. There was a trackless train, too, that kids could ride on, but unfortunately, due to bad weather on the day we visited, it wasn't an option. This video display went into quite a bit of history about why and how timber became such an important industry around Clinton in the late 1800s. Won't go into details here, but if you go to the museum, you can watch this video and find out for yourself. This was a nifty old grandfather clock. Not sure if it had any significance, but it looked cool. There was a place where you could see different animal pelts and what they felt like. This was a simulator going down the Mississippi River while controlling a raft. I think one of my sons would have done this simulator the entire time if I had let him. There is an actual functional sawmill at the location, but it wasn't operating on the day we went. One neat thing is that they had these three-quarter scale kid-sized cabins uh, throughout the place where kids can go inside and see what it was like to live as a logger. Uh, this one I think was the kitchen where they prepared meals and ate. This one was the bunkhouse and one thing I found interesting is that most of the time the loggers slept two men in a bed not per bunk like four men per bunk two men in a twin-sized bed Boy, that would be uncomfortable. And this is the foreman's office where they did record keeping. It was basically like a company town, so they sold things from here to the timbermen. They had some hands-on tools you could use and try out. The green equipment seen here is from a large collection that was donated to the museum. If my understanding is correct, this equipment was mostly from the early 1900s. So kind of on the tail end or maybe even a little after Clinton's heyday as a lumber capital. If you know more about this or if you have comments to clarify, please put them in the comment section below. While you're at it, please subscribe to my channel. The more people subscribe, the more I can keep making videos like this. Thank you for your consideration. If you like old pictures of a historic nature, you're going to love this museum. And while I show you some of those, I'll take just a brief moment to mention 
I think this museum is ideal for kids between the age of like 7 and 12. Littler kids can enjoy it as well, and you'll see a play area towards the end. Um, teens can enjoy it depending on their personality, but I think that kind of 7 to 12 age range is perfect because um, you're, you're old enough to be able to read, but you're still young enough to really have that curious spirit, and with the hands-on things, it's kind of a perfect fit for them. How much was a mill worker paid in 1891? This chart shows a little. An oiler made 14 cents an hour. A boy working in the mill made 9 cents an hour. Here's a tea service, I think made of silver, owned by one of the early lumber baron families in Clinton. Some information on buildings named after some of those families that were pillars of the community. Uh, here's a picture of the Joyce family and some of their descendants, one of the talking head guys there on the top left. There were no child labor laws, so you had boys around age 10, 11 working in the mill. They have some original equipment on display of the equipment used by the raft men the men who would send the log rafts down the Mississippi River. You can see just behind this fake hollow tree that there's a small play area that might appeal to younger kids. Another hands-on thing for the kids of any age. There's a short railroad line right next to the museum too, so we were lucky enough to see a very small train going down the tracks. When you're done at the museum, I suggest you go just less than a block away to the Elijah Buhol Terrace, up the levee to a look at the Mississippi River, like my family did. Doesn't cost a thing. And while we're looking at the river and imagining log rafts go down the river in the 1800s, I'd like to mention that just down the river from Clinton is the Quad Cities, specifically East Moline, Illinois, where the night before this, we spent the night in the brand new Hyatt Place Motel completely for free, thanks to Chase Ultimate Rewards. So one way you can support this channel is to watch a video about how we were able to get our lodging completely for free using that technique. I'll put a link here, and there will also be one in the description box. Thanks, folks.